Prometheus, 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 Prometheus. You got Prometheus just looking really lonely. Uh, that's that's a topic for another video though. Prometheus, Prometheus, I always eat my pizza crust. A couple weeks ago, I brought back Chrometheus, my super high-end custom water-cooled workstation PC that I built nearly two years ago and have yet to boot successfully a single time, or at least not with all of the original parts, uh, mainly because the GPU was not working. And in that last video, I disassembled the system, set the GPU aside, and figured, well, we can at least work on the motherboard, make sure that it's still working properly, and do some testing on it with a different GPU. But then the motherboard wasn't even working. Host error! And I thought it was because during a BIOS update, Date that I had done several months ago that something had interrupted the process, whether it was a power failure or something else, and that I had basically bricked the board, which is why we were getting a postcode error on the OLED screen that's on the motherboard. So I called ASUS customer service and issued an RMA so that they would send me a new board in time for the NVIDIA RTX 4000 series launch, uh, which is one of the cards that I plan to put into Prometheus since the uh, existing RTX 2080 Ti is a bit outdated at this point. But after posting that video, a couple of you commented and suggested that maybe the reason why the the board wasn't booting was because there was no fan plugged into the CPU fan header. And I've known this for, for ages. For many years, I've known that a system will not boot or may not boot if there's no fan plugged into that header. Uh, but every single time that's happened to me, I've always gotten a prompt that says CPU fan not connected, you know, please plug in or whatever to continue or whatever it says. Uh, but I've never once gotten a black screen. And that's what Prometheus was doing. It was just a pure black screen giving me no signal, uh, no indication that that was the issue. I've never experienced that before. But today, I I'm going to try and plug in the fan into the motherboard and see if that works, see if it magically fixes things. If it doesn't, I'm not 100% I'm not expecting it to. I'm, not, I'm trying to be cautiously optimistic, I guess. But if it doesn't work, then we can still carry on with the video and really focus on the GPU for today. Because what I wanna do is take this water block off and put the original air cooler that came with this card, which is an Asus ROG Strix RTX 2080 Ti gaming OC, and see if the graphics card works then. Because there, there could be some issues with like mounting tension if the block isn't mounted properly, which I doubt it because I actually have uninstalled and reinstalled the block multiple times. This was, you know, many months, if not a year plus ago, uh, and the GPU still would not work. But today would be the first time ever that I've actually tried reinstalling the original air cooler to see if it works or if the GPU has in fact been DOA this entire time. But first, let's see what happens when we try booting the system with the CPU fan header populated. Before we continue, this video is brought to you by cdkeyoffers.com, a one-stop shop for reliable gaming software keys. Right now, they're offering 20% off Windows 10 Pro OEM keys when you enter promo code BW20 at checkout. Getting your key is easy. Once you've added it to your cart, enter promo code BW20, fill out your payment info, and complete the purchase before heading to your purchased orders page to view and copy your new key. Simply paste it into the Windows activation page and voila, your operating system is fully authenticated. To grab your discounted Windows 10 Pro key now, click on the link in the description below. Okay, let's give this a shot. Not holding my breath. Not holding my breath. Could take a minute. Come on. All the codes, give me all the codes. Check memory, check hard drives. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Still nothing. Been a good 20 seconds. Nada. Nada. Monitor. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> that got me excited for a second. It was just the, the monitor splash screen. Come on, come on man. man. All right. Looks like we're gonna, yep. Display port. No signal. Just as I suspected. Okay, well I guess in that case we can just, whoa, ho, 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 ho. Whoa, 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 whoa. Huh? Eh, oh. Uh, Oh, it, it works, it works. Cometheus is working, oh my God, it works, it works, it works. Holy Toledo, holy freaking Toledo. Let's do this, oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, that actually worked. Thank you, thank you, thank you people in the comments for suggesting that. Like I said, I've never once experienced a complete black screen from not having the CPU uh, fan header populated. But here we are. I've already learned something in this video, and I guess this is good to share with the rest of the class who doesn't know the thing that I just found out two seconds ago. Always connect the fan header. Always connect the fan header. Even if it's not the systems like you're doing a test boot or something outside of the case, connect the fan header because even if you're getting a completely black screen, it may still very well be the issue. So, oh my gosh, we're in the BIOS. We're in the freaking BIOS. Look at that. And we're getting, our, our, our temps are getting pretty high there. So I should probably turn the system off because we're not actually cooling the, the CPU right now. Da -da -da -da. Oh no, no, that's not connected. Eh, eh, eh. Okay. All right. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. 
Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, okay. Okay, so what, what can we do now? What, what, so I guess we could still go through the, the, the GPU process. Well, we can do some testing on the motherboard. I'll save that for later though. Why don't we still carry on with swapping this out, uh, swapping the block out for the stock GPU cooler. Let me go ahead and find it. Let me go ahead and find it. Oh, I think this is it right here. Well, yes it is, yes it is. Okay, this'll work, this'll work. We've got all the mounting screws. Yes, thank God I'm so organized. Uh, all right, cool. And look at how many RTX 2080 Ti's I have. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's 2080 Super, four. I have four of them. What What even is, all these, these all must be empty. I'm just going to check really quick. Oh, this one actually feels kind of heavy. Oh wait, what does this say? GPU for water cooling charity build. Uh, cooler only. Oh, okay, so this is just the cooler. This is for a charity build. I think uh, when Paul and I did one of our charity streams, uh, maybe a year or so ago, uh, a year or two ago, I guess. Uh, and then we got this one, probably another cooler. Doesn't have any markings on it. This is sealed in the box. This has never been opened. This is the exact same GPU that we're using in Prometheus right now. Bro, bro, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Are, you saying, are you saying that we could actually just use this GPU instead? and this block will be compatible with that card because it would be the exact same GPU. What the frick, when did I, how, how did I not realize I had another one of these lying around this whole time? I could have, oh my God, dude, bro. Oh my God, oh my God. I could have, when did I get that? Why, why is that here? I didn't know I had another one of these just sealed. I, I, I really don't know. I don't know what to say, but this is good. This is good news. This is great news. We can actually take this block, put it onto this card, slap it into Prometheus, and for the first time ever, we might actually be able to boot it successfully with all the original parts. <sighs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, uh, yeah, let's, can we do that? Let's do that. God, I love having lots of hardware. See, this is the problem with having so much hardware. You just, you just can't keep track of it all. It's horrible. I'm sure all of you feel so sorry for me for having this abundance of PC parts. You don't, you don't want my problems. Wait, da, 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 da. hold on, before I get ahead of myself, I'm not gonna make the same mistake that I did last time with this GPU. Before I actually put on a GPU block onto here, I want to first make sure that this card works. Because if it's DOA like the last one, or at least I think that one's DOA, then we're, we're gonna have a real bad time if I install the block on there and everything and find out way too late. So let's go ahead and try this again. This is gonna be a really quick test boot. Again, we don't wanna leave the system on for too long because there is no active cooling on our Ryzen CPU, which is a Threadripper 3770X, gets very hot, or 3970X rather. Uh, but let's go ahead and just see if this works. Come on, baby, come on. Come on, sugar. Show me some love. Come on, baby. Eh, eh, eh. Uh, 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 uh. Little dot, little dot, little underscore, little underscore there. I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we're good. Hey, okay, the GPU works, the GPU works. Oh, and by the way, I should mention that just because I found a working RTX 2080 Ti does not mean that I'm not going to use an RTX 4000 series card. This is, this is old news, still a fantastic card, but I'm definitely going to still upgrade it to, let's say an RTX 4090 when the time comes. But I just had another thought. I just had another thought. And you hear me out, hear me out guys. Should the RTX 4090 be water cooled like the original Prometheus intended, or should I leave it air cooled and have both radiators serving the CPU alone because the CPU is going to get freakishly hot. It's got 32 cores, 64 threads, and I would imagine that the RTX 4090 would have a decent enough cooler on it to keep it cool, especially with these three Noctua fans blowing cool air onto it. But, I, you know, I'm just, I'm a little torn right now because I know that there's a sexy factor. There's a sexy factor of having the full loop with CPU and GPU all hooked up, but then there's also the practical logical factor, which is I'm probably gonna be taxing the CPU. I am going to be taxing the CPU a lot more than the GPU as this is a workstation editing system or it is going to be once it's finally working. So what, I, I don't know, I don't, I'm torn, I'm torn. I think I, I, think I need, I think I need to, to ask Twitter. Let me, let me ask Twitter, I'll be right back. All right, it's been like 15 minutes or so since I posted the, the poll on Twitter. Let's see what you guys said. 50-50, come on, seriously? Seriously, Jabez Christmas, you guys are useless. Okay, well, actually, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anyway, we don't have to decide that right now. In fact, you guys will see this video. You guys let me know. Should I integrate the RTX 4090 into the loop or should I dedicate the entire loop to the Ryzen Threader for chip? Because again, this is an editing workstation uh, and we also don't know how hot the RTX 4090 is going to get. So maybe it's best that we cross that bridge when we get to it and we can actually test thermals and stuff with that card once it's here. But for now, let's put a block on this thing. Then we'll fire up Prometheus, install Windows, drivers, and do some testing. I'm actually most excited to see what kind of thermals we get in here because again, I still have not seen any of that. We'll do a Cinebench run, all that jazz. Well, let's start with the water block.
All right, the new RTX 2080 Ti has been fully blocked and is now installed into Prometheus. Yes, massive GP sag, but we can fix that later. For now, let's just see if this works. We'll do a quick test boot, again, because we're not actually cooling anything. The loop is obviously not set up, so we can't leave it running too long before it overheats, but we should at least be running long enough to see whether or not we get a post. Come on, come on, come on, come on. This is it, this is it, this is it. If it works, if it, if it works, if it works, we can move on to, to building. No, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna speak too soon. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna jinx it. Not jinxing it. This is me, not jinxing it. Come on though, come on. Come on, please, 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 please. Is it plugged in? It's plugged in. Okay, it's plugged in. It's good. Power's on, it's clearly, it's clearly on. Is it on? Yes, it is, it, it's, it's on. Got the, uh, the fan spinning, yes. I'm psyching myself out right now, I'm psyching myself out. Come on, please work, please, 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 please. Oh no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, there we go. Turn it off. We're good. We are, we're good. We have the green light, people. We have the green light for the first time ever. We finally have the green light to rebuild the loop, fill it up, and install Windows for testing. Thank the Lord Almighty. You're welcome, pimp. Don't worry about it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Prometheus is up and running for the first time ever. Oh my god, oh my god. Dang, dang she's sexy. Or he, he, she, whatever. It's, it's fluid, fluid build, obviously, water cooled. Uh, but uh, you can see it's looking looking pretty good. Running like a champ, running uh, some center bench right now. And uh, we'll take a look at uh, temperatures and the scores in just a sec, but a few quick things. Uh, you can see that uh, I've actually had the system running for about uh, roughly 45 minutes to an hour now, just setting things up, drivers and all that. And as you can tell here, the uh, the fluid level has gone down. I did have it filled up to right about here uh, at the uh, the port, uh, the fill port, and then it's come down as as all the air bubbles have kind of slowly gotten out and the fluid has filled in all the gaps. So I'll, I'll top that off in, in, in just a sec. But uh, the other thing I noticed is that this fan right here is not is not on. I don't know why. I, I thought I'd plugged it in everything, but apparently not. It could be because I think this fan might be on an extension. So maybe the extension got pulled uh, while I was fishing around in the back at some point. But I'll, I'll fix that later. Shouldn't be a big deal right now. The other thing is that I did put two SSDs back into this Dim.2 slot. One's a one terabyte uh, NVMe drive. The other's a two terabyte NVMe drive. I currently have the operating system, which is Windows 10, loaded up onto the one terabyte drive. I'm gonna save the other two terabyte drive for games, pretty much. Games and mass storage. Not that I plan to really game on this thing. It's mostly gonna be for editing workstation stuff, rendering and all that jazz. But if I ever do want to game on whatever setup I decide to put this on, it is kind of nice to have that option uh, and not dig into the uh, the drives that are supposed to have all of my raw footage and uh, you know essential assets on there. I have not, however, populated our expansion card, which has four M.2 slots on it. Uh, I'll do that in due time, probably populate it with some two terabyte drives and get it back to where it was before. And that's gonna be my work, uh, what, what do you call it, my scratch disk uh, for editing and stuff where all the raw footage goes onto. And I'm probably gonna set that up into a RAID configuration, maybe a RAID 5, maybe a RAID 10. Apart from that, like I said, everything is running smoothly. One thing to note though, is that I couldn't get the memory to post at its rated speed of 4,000 megahertz. For some reason, it just wasn't posting. I changed the, the voltage uh, manually to 1.35 in the BIOS, as well as uh, manually configured all of the, the timings but still no post. So I had to dump it down to 3,600 megahertz and that seemed to do just fine, which is what it's running at right now, as you can see there. Uh, double that and you get 3600. So that'll do for now. I, I might tinker with it later on, but uh, it's okay for the time being. And right now we are running Cinebench R23. This is just the single thread test. You can see it chugging along there quite quite slowly, not not super fast, but uh, this is Threadripper. We're, we're talking about a Threadripper chip here. The HEDT or high-end desktop chips are really not known to run super fast. Uh, that's not what they're intended for. They don't hit super high clock speeds like uh, like a top-end like Ryzen 5900X would or a uh, 12900K from Intel would. Those are great chips for gaming, but this is not a gaming CPU by any stretch. It's really just for multi-threaded workloads, anything that can leverage a lot of cores at the same time. So that's why these things are great for video editing and coding 
painting, 3D modeling, that sort of thing, uh, which is why I'm pretty sure we're gonna see a much more impressive result with the multi-threaded test in Cinebench R23. But uh, we'll let this finish up really quick with the single-threaded test and see what score we get. All right, we're just about done here, and boom, 1,288. That's our single-threaded score. That puts us just below an Intel Core i7-1165G7 and above a Core i7-7700K. So yeah, like I said, it's it's hardly faster than a several generations old uh, Intel quad-core CPU. I mean, it can still game if you really want it to. It'll get the job done, but it's really not what it's intended for. Where the magic really happens is when you're doing multi-threaded workloads. So we'll go ahead and start the multi-threaded test. Go! Look at that. Look at that beast go! Bro! Oh, it's so beautiful. 64 threads at work, just like that. Oh my god, 43,728. Yeah, you're gonna top that chart. You're topping that chart, just blowing away the 2990WX, which is the last gen uh, Ryzen Threadripper chip. Uh, and it's even it's even one, one tier higher than it. That was the flagship Threadripper. This is not even flagship. I think flagship is a 3990X, which I'm, I'm too poor people to, to afford that chip. But damn, son, damn. Let's see if our thermals are equally impressive. On the core, we got 68.9C. Oh, we were so close to 69. I'm sad, but you know what? That's that's fantastic. We, we stayed under 70 degrees Celsius on both the single thread and multi-threaded test. That is amazing. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, before I get carried away, let's do one more test. Uh. Adobe Premiere Pro, here we go. So I just recorded a 10 minute clip, uh, 4K, 30 frames per second. I actually just recorded it just now. This is me configuring the memory timings actually uh, on, on Prometheus. And uh, I actually applied some, some color filters and stuff just to, to tax the, uh, the encode a little bit more. But let's go ahead and try exporting this. I'm gonna do, I did 45 megabits per second. We're gonna do one pass. And, oh, let, let's time it. Can we time it? All right, I'm gonna be a second off because I only have one hand, but ready, set, go, and start. And here we go. Just look at it go. Look at it go. It's only been a minute, 20 seconds. We're already halfway there. Are you freaking kidding me? Look at that, look at that, look at that. Look at all those cores. Look at all those cores bouncing around. woo -wee. yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy, we're, gonna, we're rocking around four gigahertz, a little over four gigahertz on uh, at least uh, one or some of the cores. I should also mention we're leveraging CUDA acceleration. So we are taxing that RTX 2080 Ti a bit in order to help us achieve a faster render time. And it looks like we're gonna get, we're, probably, we're definitely gonna beat three minutes. Some, some, some people watch sports for fun. This is, this is what I watch for fun. Okay, almost there. Come on, let's beat three minutes. Come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Come on, you have four seconds. Oh no, oh no, we're not gonna beat three. Oh shoot, oh we didn't beat three minutes. Dang it, just, just over, it's gonna be just over three. All right, 305, 305, still not too shabby for a 10 minute 4K 30 FPS encode. Bada bing, bada boom. What was our temperature on that? Woo, it's 65 C. 65 degrees Celsius, not too bad at all. And then what was our, what was our GPU at? Oh, GPU actually got a little toastier, 79.6. Ooh, damn. That 2080 Ti was working overtime on that render. You a hot boy. But man, it feels, it feels so good to actually get this build done. Like it's, it's actually done. I can't, I can't believe I'm saying that right now. I didn't think this was, I really didn't think this would be the video that would happen, but here we are. Uh, obviously this is all temporary though. As soon as the RTX 4000 series comes along, I'm going to slap one of those bad boys right into here. Uh, hopefully an RTX 4090, if I can get my hands on one. And actually I probably won't be able to get one of those cards in there right at launch because it generally takes third party manufacturers, uh, water block manufacturers like EK, uh, a little bit of time after a GPU launch, a new GPU launch in order to get those blocks manufactured and, and make sure that they're uh, properly working and stuff. So it might be maybe, I don't know, like a month or so after launch. Either way, we'll figure it out. But for now, Prometheus is done. I am happy. And if you're happy too, you should toss a like on this video and get subscribed for more tech content coming at you really soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, have a good one and I'll see y'all in the next video.